Hello and welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to City Skylines 2. When you're planning your community, you're probably thinking about creating the most efficient roadway network, finding the best places for specific land uses, and ensuring that your citizens are safe and happy. But you should also be thinking about providing your citizens with a variety of options for getting around town. You should be planning for pedestrian connections that reduce walking distances, as well as providing transit service so that your citizens can get around your community without needing to rely on a car. And certain modes of transit can even bring visitors into your city, allowing it to become a tourism destination. So you should plan for that as well. New for City Skylines too, citizens will weigh a variety of factors when determining how to move around your city, including travel time, travel comfort, and the overall cost of a trip. So if you provide inexpensive, comfortable, and cost-effective alternatives to driving, your citizens will get out of their cars and get into transit. The net result of this is a reduction in traffic, reductions in air and noise pollution, and improvements to the overall level of the buildings in your city, since the reduced transportation expenses will directly impact the pocketbooks of the citizens in your city. So if your population can support transit, you should absolutely add it as soon as you can. But regardless of whether you are coming to City Skylines 2 as a complete newbie or a veteran of its predecessor, implementing transit can be daunting the first time you do it. Each mode has its own idiosyncrasies related to the implementation that you'll need to learn before you can make them operational. So in this episode, we'll go over how to implement the most basic forms of transit, taxis and buses. We'll explore how they work, how to implement them effectively, and along the way, we'll continue to expand Tutoria and take care of a few odds and ends that will keep our citizens happy and our city growing. And if you love transit, hit the like button. And if you prefer another mode, hit the like button for that too. And let me know your favorite method of getting around down in the comments. Or drop an emoji representing your favorite mode for the sake of engagement. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. To gain access to some of the basic public transportation options, you just have to reach the fourth milestone, Grand Village. And once you do that, you'll gain access to this transportation tab within your development trees. The basic transportation services include buses and taxis, and I know that they're not the most sexy or exciting forms of transit, but they are incredibly effective at a couple of things, including providing transit to small communities like the one we have here. But they're also good at serving lower density areas or far flung areas and destinations and providing supplemental transit or first and last mile connections from urban rail, including trams, light rail and inner city trains. So let's begin to implement them, starting with taxis. Taxis are the most basic form of public transportation available in city skylines, and they don't really take much to set them up. All you have to do is go into your transportation menu and place a taxi depot, which is available underneath the road tab within this menu. But I wanna point out one thing. You'll notice that the transportation overlay has appeared and we already have some citizens using taxis. And in fact, you can actually see some taxis circulating around the community. This doesn't mean that you don't need to place the depot. It means that taxis are coming in from outside connections. If we want the opposite to occur, people getting picked up in our community and dropped off within our community or in other communities, we need to have one of these depots. So I want to place this, but because taxis are generally not actually public transportation, but rather privately owned, I love to place these depots in industrial areas. In this case, I'm gonna place this right about here. So I'm gonna purchase a tile. And then I don't wanna place this on Dean Street. I don't want vehicles loading directly on there. So I'm going to add an alley and I will place this depot right on the alley. Now in City Skylines 1, all you had to do was place the taxi depot and it would start operating. But if we take a look at this, there's nothing happening. And that's because by default in City Skylines 2, you have to place a taxi stand to get this to be operational. This is where people will basically walk to to get picked up by a taxi, and then they can be dropped off anywhere. There are two taxi stands available. There is this, just a pole basically, and then a shelter. We'll place one of these shelters in our downtown area. And you can see that this shelter can actually slide along, <laughs> whoops, it can actually slide along the side of the road. So we'll place that right about here, and then folks will actually queue up in this location to access the taxi. Now, let's say this is not the perfect location. You can flex this within a certain amount. So let's say I add one here, it's gonna move slightly along the road. Now, another option that I have is to delete this. So I can use the bulldozer tool and just delete this. And now there is no taxi stand. But obviously I do want to have this here, so I'll add that back. And when you're thinking about placing these, the sorts of things that I would think about are placing them in areas that have a lot of density, residential density in particular. So clearly right here, there's a lot of residential density. You might also wanna place this in a location that has lots of businesses, a destination that people might want to leave from. So this is a good location generally. 
uh, because we have a lot of residential and commercial uh, and honestly employment density around here. The other location that might be really good for us would be having a pole somewhere in our little industrial district over here. So I think that we'll place one over here. And then I want to place one by our college as well. Now you might have noticed I've switched over to the sign. One of the reasons that I've switched over to the sign is you can't place the shelters on these little alleyways and that's what we have in front of our university. So I'll just use a normal sign right here and that will unlock Boomtown. Let's take a look at this real quick. There's not much that you unlock with Boomtown so it'll be just a moment. Yeah, we get uh, six development points, eight expansion permits, textile farming, a couple policies, and an enhanced loan limit. So beneficial, but not huge. Now, I want to take a look at this original stand because you're going to get to see it operational. You can see that there's a taxi that's coming right here, picking people up, and each taxi can carry four passengers at a time. And we've got a couple of other people queuing up here as well. Let's head back over to our depot because there's a few more things that we can do with this. So I mentioned the upgrades. If we wanted people to be able to be picked up anywhere, you might want to consider adding the dispatch center, which allows this. So without the dispatch center, people can be picked up at our shelters or our signs and dropped off anywhere, either within our city or outside of the city. And once you add the dispatch center, people can be picked up anywhere. So it basically makes those signs not nearly as important. So I think that this is a very valuable upgrade. It's only $22,000. It adds $12,000 a month at upkeep. But relative to some of the other upgrades for the taxi depot, I think it's way more valuable. The other upgrade is the electric taxis, uh, which only upgrades a quarter of the fleet to electric taxis, and it costs 16,000 per month. So it's actually more expensive than the dispatch center. So I wouldn't look at this as a, one of the first upgrades to make. The reason you might wanna do this is it reduces the volume, the noise pollution generated by the taxis, and it also reduces the emissions. So that's the value there. And then the other upgrade that you can add is the garage extension. Now this extension is a sub building, so it adds it onto the outside. So you might wanna leave some space there. It adds five vehicles and $12,000 a month in upkeep. So again, I don't know if this is the most cost-effective method of uh, expanding your fleet. You take a look, for instance, the upkeep of the taxi depot itself is 28,000. So um, it, it wouldn't take long for garage extensions not to be a viable uh, way of, of actually increasing capacity here. So that said, we are gonna add the dispatch center and that does change the value proposition a bit because now you could add a couple of these garage extensions and it would still make sense to add the garage extensions rather than adding another taxi depot elsewhere in your city. Now just reasonably, this is a really small city, so I think that this is a perfect solution for a city of this size. If your city gets bigger, you might want to start considering buses, but we need to grow this city before we do that. So let's move on to expanding our city. The primary reason that we're growing the city right now is I just don't think it is large enough to really merit having a fixed route transit service such as a bus. From this couplet right here to the end of this island is about 2,000 meters, a little over a mile. And that's just, it's tiny, <laughs> just reasonably it's very tiny. We also don't have very much density here and you'd want to have some sort of density or some major destinations to warrant having fixed route service. So we are going to grow this island and I think that we'll probably develop all the way up to about right here. So let's begin by purchasing a few tiles. And I know that I want to place some of our city serving uses over right about here. So we're gonna purchase all the way out to here. So we'll buy this tile, this one, this one, and these two. And I think I'm gonna pick this one up as well. So I have all of the island. And then I want to begin with our major roads through this area. The very first being this collector couplet that we began in the previous episode. So. I'm going to grade a bit, and the main reason I'm doing this is we're really looking at a road that's going, going to be really important in the future. So we are going to want this to be as level as possible. Well, <laughs> that's not the right way to do it. We're going to use our level terrain tool, not our shift terrain tool, and we'll level this off right here. And I basically want to make the bridge as easy for myself as possible. So I want to toggle the parallel road tool. We'll stick with our one offset. That is what we've used over here. And just know that if you wanted this to be a highway bridge with some of the fancier bridge spans, you'd have to actually increase this offset beyond one. Otherwise, the spans will touch. So I'm going to turn on my contour lines. Whenever you're building roads, I think that you should. So we'll go with our two-lane one-way roads here. And I'm going to elevate this just a little bit so we get two 
1.5 meters. And this should give us the elevation that we need to get across here. I have a general idea. I'm just going to curve this right in. So I will level this out. And I think about 100 is what we will need. And I'll use the slope terrain tool. So we will right mouse click up here, which I believe is our top elevation. And then we'll just slope all the way across. And then I'm going to soften along here. We'll take this down just a little bit but I want to leave this hill here. This will make an interesting neighborhood and I don't think that we should get rid of all of our elevation and terrain. Now, before we add this, I've got some ideas. I'm going to basically extend this out a few blocks and then I want to extend this road straight down. So when I'm trying to create a nice grid, I always make sure that my snap to guidelines is off. If you have it on, you'll end up with lots of wonkiness. So we will extend our block out, which is 120 meters, and then we'll send this down our 88. And I'll do that for a couple of blocks. And always remember to reset your elevation step. I forgot to do that. We were going up two meters arbitrarily. You never want to forget about this. And you can see with that, it was really easy to create nice blocks. Our grids are completely perfect. Everything's looking really good. Now we are going to change the direction of our blocks and I'm going to create a temporary guideline right here for ourselves. And then we'll continue our existing pattern. And we've got two more blocks there. Now we are going to use our guidelines and our curved road tool. I just want to find that center right there. And I'm struggling a little bit, so I'll try the other side where there'll be less conflicts. And then I see that I have my 90 degree square icon. So that means that it's perfect for me to go and make this connection. There we go. And that is exactly what I was looking for. This block right here is likely going to change considerably. So we're going to delete this for now because I want to curve this into this road right here. So we'll go back to our two lane one way roads and turn on our parallel tool once again. And then we'll start on this side and I want to make sure I've got that plus there. That shows me that I am lining up with both this intersection and this road. And then I want to create a guideline for myself so that I'm able to consistently do what I'm about to do. So I want to go up my 88 meters, which is what I've been doing. And then we'll go back in and turn all of these on. And then I'm going to use the continuous road tool, but I need to set a point. And this guideline right here is the point that I'm going to set. And then I'm going to find a spot right here where it's basically perfectly straight and we will end that curve right here. Now I'm not done with this. I'm going to actually delete this one and then we'll go back into our parallel tool and I want to increase the offset. We'll try five to see how this one looks. I think seven's probably a little bit more appropriate. I basically want to make a frontage road here and we'll have commercial along this frontage road. That's why we have this guideline here because I'm going to once again select this guideline and then we were going to try to parallel this road perfectly. And we can see that we've got a couple of conflicts. So we've got to delete some of these roads that we just put in. And now at this end over here, I'm just trying to maintain the same separation. If you're really careful, it should be 100% the same. And the distance between this road right here should be the same all the way up it. And now we have a perfectly mirrored road, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now I want to do the exact same thing on this other side. So for this one, I'm going to turn off parallel mode once again, and I'm going to create myself another guideline. And now for this one, I need to figure out the distance between these two roads. It's 72 meters. So I will measure out 72 meters. And this is where I'm going to be starting from. You have to remember the parallel road tool, it always starts on the right hand side. So I'm going to delete this road once again, and then we'll turn this back on. We're still at our seven elevation step and you see it's perfect right here. And there we are. We've got a beautiful frontage road all the way along this. And now I just want to finish the grid through here and I actually want to improve this. And one thing that I've been experimenting with that I've learned is that I can actually get this to be much closer if I have the right snap tools on. So watch this. We're going to turn just snap to the side of the building on and then we'll come right along the side of the cemetery. And if I'm really gentle about this, I can indeed make this connection right here. I can do the exact same thing over here. So we're going to call a little bit of a mulligan. And we'll make that nice tight connection right there. Oh, that's so much better. And then I'll improve these as well. I'll get rid of this and we should be able to make a nice, simple curved road connection right in here. As long as we have our snap to guidelines on. 
And now we just have to join up these couple of grids. And when you see things change like this, it can sometimes signify that there's been a different developer or things of that nature, depending on the age of the city. We're going to pretend it's something like that. We've had a different developer come through and they have changed the grid, gone in a different direction. I like that a lot. Now, as someone that is a fan of unbroken grids, this absolutely disappoints me. But as someone who also wants this road hugging this building, I guess I'll have to get over my disappointment. So that's why we've done this. It is not perfect. It will be good enough. Sometimes you can't let perfect be the enemy of good. This will be just fine. And then I'm not going to break these blocks up. We've got full zoning through here. And this opens up the opportunity for park space and things of that nature. Things that need more space. And you should definitely leave space for those sorts of uses. And then we are going to extend this across. It looks like we are close, but a little bit off. And again, perfect. Enemy of good. This is fine. Now I'll worry about the directionality of this in a little bit. I don't think it's a major concern right now. And there we go. We've got that nice and filled out there. Now I want to worry about this area, but this is probably the last area that I'm going to think about. We're going to move over here for just a moment, and I'm going to call another mulligan on something that we did in the previous episode. I want to use this road as half of our couplet and rethink this area. So the way that we're going to rethink this area is to actually replace this road right here with an arterial. So these people would be furious, but I do think that it is something that could happen over time. So we will upgrade this and then I will use the appropriate directionality here because I want to start thinking about how I make this connection in. So we're going to back these streets out just a little bit and then I'm going to give myself a guideline road right here. And I'm going to create this angle with parallel mode on. So this is nice and easy to put together. And then now that I have this, the trick is going to be getting this road to nicely turn into this one. So we'll use our continuous tool. We'll make sure that we've got create parallel road off. And I think this is a bit too close. So what I think we're going to do is add a new node right here. I'm going to downgrade this and then we're going to create this other connection here. So we'll go into our continuous tool. I'm going to turn off all of my toggles and I want to have snap to the sides of the buildings on along with snap to existing geometry. This will allow me to select this lane right here and then we'll also turn on our guidelines. And now I can select this spot individually and I'm going to pull this out and I'll find this node right here and just bring this right in. Now, as long as I have this configured correctly, I should be able to get rid of this traffic signal that's right here. I have my road tools unlocked, so I'll just get rid of this. And you can see those faint white lines are showing me that this is functioning correctly. I will also remove all the crosswalks here. Those are way inappropriate. And then I'll get rid of this guideline right here as well. Now, this is going to be very, very helpful in this area. The one thing that I want to change is I'm not thrilled about the way that this is coming in. So I'm going to get rid of Robin Lane. And then we're going to establish a road right here that provides access only to this facility. And then again, remove our signals and our crosswalks. That is perfect. That's much better. We can develop along here if we want. Now this road is looking really good and we've established a new arterial in this area with our couplet, but that's not the only one I want to establish. And woo, <laughs> we've got to fix this as well. And there we go. Just basically smooth that out a little bit. Looks a ton better. Now it looks like we've lost a couple of homes here. The zoning got a little bit off and honestly, that's completely fine. All right. Now that we've reestablished this area as our couplet, we can change the directionality here and we should absolutely do that before we lose track of it. So I'm just going into the replace tool. I'm selecting here and holding it down and then I can go all the way to the other end and it will change that road to a one way. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And now we are good to go with this. But there's one more couplet that I want to create. I want to create an east west connectivity as well with a couplet. And we're going to add that right about here. So what I'm thinking is that beyond the high school, at some point, we will convert this to be a four lane arterial. I think we'll try to do that right about here. So I will send this down and find this angle right here. And this is where we will switch this road to be a four lane arterial. Let's flatten this out and then we'll stub this in. So I'm just going to upgrade this on the side. So we have our place where we're joining together with our roads. And there we go. Now for this couplet, we're going to basically come probably up to our high school or maybe just a little ways 
towards our high school and then I want to bend this road in. So I'm going to turn on just my snapped 90 degree angles and to the sides of the building and that's going to allow me to do this. This is going to basically make it really easy to create this turn and now I'll turn on snap to guidelines and I'm going to stop this bend right at about that driveway right in the center of it and then we'll turn our simple curve and that's what we'll use to connect right in here. And truthfully, we'll just take the curve all the way back there. That's going to look really, really good. Once again, whenever you do stuff like this, clean it up right away so you don't forget. And then look at your guidelines to see if things are making sense. They are. I don't love certain movements out of here. I don't think a roundabout is going to work. I'm going to restrict the left hand turn here. I think that that'll probably make a ton of sense eventually. And I'm basically preventing this movement where someone would be able to cross all of that traffic. So now we just need to upgrade these roads. We'll go into our replace tool again, and I want to bring the couplet all the way down. So I'll select down here and I turned all of my snap tools on so I don't inadvertently shift the roads and then I'll come all the way to the end here. And we'll upgrade right there and then we'll do the exact same thing down here. And the primary reason that I chose these roads are number one, we are linking directly to one of our major destinations. We're close to another one. We're cutting through our density. And the reason I think the couplet makes sense is we could take one of these lanes and upgrade it to a bus and taxi dedicated road in the future if we choose to do so. And we might do that this episode. And now I'm noticing that there's a stop bar right here, which tells me that there is a signal. Once again, get rid of the signal. Now we have nice sweeping movements all the way through here. And now with that, we are ready to finish the rest of our grid through this entire area. And over here, I want to mirror what we've been doing. So I don't want the blocks to change at all. I also don't want to have too many crossings of this couplet. So I'm going to use this just so I can get a guideline and then I'll get rid of this. And then in this area, I think that we're going to do something more organic. So we'll once again go with continuous after we maybe add in one block that's predictable. So now I can just curve this in. And there we go. I decided to extend this out a little bit further because we have what appears to be a building yeah, an old mill ruins. If I get rid of this, I can't replace it. So why don't we just leave it there? So we'll just extend this block out a bit further. It's in the water, so it's upset. Let's just extend this out. And now we've preserved just a little bit of our history. And then the final neighborhood that I want to establish is going to be right behind the high school. We've got a whole bunch of land here that I think is prime for development as well. So for this, we're going to once again mirror the patterns that we've seen elsewhere. So again, that's the 88 meters up and 120 over. And then with these smaller tiles that we have in City Skylines too, sometimes you'll end up with stuff like this. I desperately want to join this up. <laughs> it's not because it's super necessary, but it's just to make myself happy. So we'll buy one more tile. We've got the money for it, so we might as well. And then once we have this, we're basically going to be at the extent that I want to extend this city out today. There we go. You, you might have noticed I preserved some of these trees right here, but we're going to say that this is an area that potentially ends up remaining undeveloped in the center. And maybe we have some housing dotting through here and that uh, maybe this is some area that's preserved just because of the trees, which is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Now, coming through this area, I want to make sure that we don't have too many crossings of what is it? another Birch Street and Amity Street. I'm not going to worry too much about street names. They are very difficult to control in this version of City Skylines Two, I assume that that will improve in the future. But right now it's very, very challenging. If you did want to rename them, though, you could just pop right in here and rename it whatever you want. We'll make this Amity Street and we'll have that on both sides. It'll likely rename itself at some point and it might loop in crazy ways. But that is how you do it. And the nice thing about clicking on an individual segment of road is you do get to see some more information about it. So that can be really helpful. We're nearly done, but I've got one more thing that I really want to do. And we've got this couplet here. And what I want to do is ensure that our zoning is occurring in the correct location. So we're going to use our paths to do that. 
And I basically don't want any zoning on this arterial. Again, the purpose of this road is going to be mobility and not accessibility. So if I add this path right here, and I'm gonna turn off everything except for zoning cell and snap to the, to the grid. What I'm trying to do is give myself the ability to snap right in the middle of one of these cells. And you can see I've done that. And then now that I have these two guidelines, what we're gonna to try to do is create a simple curve between the two. So I'm gonna turn off these two. I'm gonna to snap to existing geometry and snap to guidelines. And I'm not able to find that guideline, so I'm just going to extend this out a ways. And now we'll try again. And then we can just delete this. And now it it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn acceptable. And sometimes that's as good as it needs to be. And that's how I feel about this one. We'll do the exact same thing over here. So now we've got the general layout of this area. So let's start thinking about our city services that we're gonna need down here. So the very first one is parks. And you can see that with this new area, we have very poor parks coverage. We're gonna add in everyone's favorite, a dog park, and we'll add that right around here. This should provide fairly decent coverage everywhere, but we could use some small playgrounds in nearby proximity. And this will allow every child in the neighborhood the opportunity to go to a park, which every kid deserves. And then we'll add a couple of small parks as well. And these are especially great to have in awkward shaped lots. Like this lot right here is very awkward. And if we were to get rid of our snapping, hit the I button so we can see what we're doing, we could potentially sneak one of these right here. That is wonderful. We'll just experiment a bit. We'll put two of them in there. I don't know that I love that, <laughs> but sometimes you gotta take a couple of chances. So now for our zoning, I'm going to begin with a little bit of commercial. We've got strong demand and I want to have little nodes of commercial within the neighborhoods. So we're going to very deliberately place these and create little streets like this where we have some commercial activity. These would be very important corridors in here. I'm going three back. There's nothing magical about this. It just fit in this one block and I want to mirror something. So we're just going to continue doing that. And then over here, we'll do something very similar. Maybe along the waterfront, we will once again have some commercial. We'll go six back this time. Really bothers me that there's this gap here. There's also nothing that I can do to improve it, so we'll leave that. And then I want to add office along this corridor here. The reason why I wanna add office here is office generally needs to be visible, but not necessarily easily accessible, like commercial would need that. So. Uh, in reality, you'll often see office that is easy to see, uh, like, like let's say set from the side of a highway, but not necessarily easy to access. That said, offices are much more destination type places, places that you only go if you need to. It's not like, you know, a McDonald's where you go there because you see it randomly. You go, oh, you know what? Yeah, a Big Mac sounds good. That's not the same type of use. The rest of this area is going to be primarily single family uses, and then we'll begin to increase our density closer to our downtown area. And in City Skylines 2 in particular, I think that this works just beautifully. I love the idea of increasing the density within your community over time, rather than just picking your density up front. That's generally not how it happens. I inadvertently added on to the back of these buildings with the zoning, so this would never fill in. We are going to grab, snap to the sides of the building and snap to the back of these new blocks that we created. And the only reason that we're doing this is for the sake of zoning. So because I've added these, I can get a consistent block here. So I will do that. And then right here, we get the opportunity to add just a couple of more homes. So we will take that as well. And that might be something that you want to contemplate generally is trying to have consistent block sizes. Sometimes I will very purposefully prevent zoning from occurring in certain places so that all of the homes are the same length, same distance, and do things like that temporarily so that homes are facing the correct direction or the direction that I want them all to face anyway. There's not really a correct. Now in this area, I'm leaving this location open. The primary reason for that is we may want to add some of our upgrades to our cemetery, so I don't want to make that impossible. And along here, you might have noticed these are not filling in, and that is totally fine. I love that I can fill things in with an eye for the future, and that's exactly what we're doing right there. 
I'm going to add a little bit more commercial over here. We're going to fill this in with some commercial and this will be another neighborhood shopping center. I'm thinking of this is like a strip mall, even though it's not likely going to look like a strip mall, but that's what I'm going for and envisioning for this area. And then back here, 100% single family uses. I will reserve these lots right here. Not 100% sure what we want there just yet, but I know that it is likely not single family homes. Now we've got this entire place zoned in and it should start springing to life. I want to return to our downtown area before we start to think about our buses because I think we have opportunities here to continue to increase our density, particularly since we have such strong commercial demand. We're going to add in some of our mixed use buildings. So along this Main Street corridor, Birch Street, we will begin to add in a bit of mixed use. And I'm going to take the row homes over here and spread these out a few more blocks over. And then right here, we have left the gaps along the side so that our row homes orient in the direction that we want them to orient in. And I'm going to convert a bit of this lower density commercial into some of our mixed use. So this is the first time that we're getting to use these. And I just I just love these so much. We do need to be really mindful of the size of these buildings. I'm going to divide these up with a bit of medium density residential in between so we don't get too tall on these buildings because they can get very large if you're not careful. And now that we've rezoned and increased our density, I think this is the perfect time to take a step back from zoning, let things balance out and focus on implementing our bus service. Just like our taxi service, our bus service is going to require a depot. And I think that we're going to start a little bit of a city services complex over here on this peninsula. So let's extend this little area right here. So we'll again go into our two lane road. We'll use our parallel road tool to separate this by one unit. And we're going to send this up this way. That's it. We've got a pretty significant lip here. So let's level this out using our slope terrain tool. We'll set this to about 100 and then we'll slope from maybe over here. And again, I'm doing this because this is a main artery through this area. If this were a local road, I would very likely just leave this as it is. Now we'll link up to here and I want to keep this at a perfect 180 degree angle. So I'll turn off the guidelines once again and we'll send this right down. Now I don't 100% know where this is going yet. It'll likely link up to another arterial going down this way, eventually connecting up with this highway. But for the time being, it'll end kind of abruptly. So I'll leave a stub right there so that you could turn around. And this is where we will begin our city services complex. So the, the one thing that's a little bit regretful is we've got all of this coastline here and <laughs> you know, the city wouldn't necessarily want to place their buildings right on the coast. That's very valuable land from a tax standpoint. And all of these city services generate zero tax revenue. So that is something to consider when you're placing these. That said, I guess it's better over here than in the middle of our city. So we'll go into our transportation menu and I want to place a bus depot off from this local road that I just placed, Chestnut Street. And as we place this, a few things will unlock for us our bus station, a bus stop sign and a bus stop shelter. But before we look at that at all, I want to take a look at this building and I want to plan this out just a little bit. We know that we can add a garage here. We currently have 25 vehicles which will be good enough for a few routes. So if we wanted to add one of these, we could see just about how much space this would take up and we can add a few of them around here. So we wouldn't want to place any uses directly adjacent to this. And then we have our electric buses, which we could upgrade to. That is within the footprint of this building. So we don't need to worry about that all that much. But before we get moving on our buses, I want to place one more building over here and that's in our roads menu. If we go into road services, we don't have a road maintenance depot yet. And this is important for clearing snow and for clearing accidents. And for the time being, I'll place this right here. This is another building that has an upgrade. It has a storage garage addition, but nothing inside. I'd love to scoot this over a little ways, but we've got our city boundary right here, so we won't worry about that too much. And look at all of those snow plows just rolling out of this building. We've had snow in our city for a while and no plows. That's a no-no. So thankfully, we've got those now. 
So let's begin thinking about our bus routes. And we're only gonna place a few, but the way that you do this is to place signs first. So this is kind of a paradigm shift from City Skylines, but we'll place our signs. And I want to focus these on some of our main arteries. So for instance, even though we don't have a lot going on on this street right now, I think that this couplet of Amity would be an excellent place for it. I'm gonna place these near our cross streets. So I'll place a stop right here. The reason we're doing that, again, we don't have anything focused on this street. So we'll place a stop right here, another one right here, one near the high school, and then one on this cross street as well. I'm gonna use this route as a way to get to our industrial park. And we'll have a couple of stops around here. This will be the end of the route. And then I wanna mirror our stops on this street. So the reason why I'm mirroring it is I want you to be able to get on or off without any problems. And then right here's the end of the route. So rather than placing two stops, we're not gonna worry about it too much. Now, we're gonna create a line right away. And the way that you create a line is to use the line tool. So we'll click on the line tool and then you go to a stop and you can click on the stop to begin the route. And then we'll just go up and down here. And when you get over here, when you're far out, it can be difficult to see exactly what you're doing. So I like to zoom in, and that's something that I would highly recommend with bus stops generally, because the more stops that you get, the more complicated these routes will become, and you can make a real mess of your bus routes. But right here, you're seeing that it's pretty simple if we zoom in and give it the care and attention that it needs. And then right here, we're looping around, and we're good to go. This stop is honestly pretty tight, so I'm gonna add a stop right about here, and then go back into the route tool and shift this over. And then if we wanna delete this stop, it's just as simple as deleting it. Now, let's say you decide that this stop is really popular, and obviously it's super popular. <laughs> we could go through and upgrade this to a shelter. It's just as simple as selecting your shelter and replacing it, and then it's completely replaced. The sign is gone, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And that stop remains there. So. Uh, that is an option for you. You can do the exact same thing with the signs. The thing I would I would caution you with with this is you don't want to place infrastructure that you don't need. So if this isn't a popular stop, I wouldn't necessarily upgrade it to a shelter, even though it increases your comfort score. Just for the sake of realism, reasonably, it's not all that much more to add a shelter. We're looking at a difference between $50 for the stop versus $40 for this one. And the comfort is significantly better. $10 versus 40, which is the same thing you see with the shelters for the taxis as well. So we've got our first bus line, and if you want to customize this a bit, you can go into your transportation menu right here, and then click on your bus icon, and then we can rename our route. Let's rename this the red line. And because it's the red line, we'll wanna change the color. So we'll click on this right here, and then we can just slide the color to wherever we want it to be. It'll change the color of the bus itself and the line that we see on the screen. And then if we want to customize the route further, we can click on our line details. And when you click on this, you get this really neat overlay of the bus line itself. You'll see your individual buses on the line, traveling along the line. You can click on individual stops and then focus on that stop to see what's happening there. You can hover over and see the number of passengers queued at each of those stops. And then going back to our line details, we can adjust the ticket prices here. Lowering it will make this a more attractive route, get people out of their cars. We can adjust the number of vehicles that are assigned. This is something that you're probably gonna wanna do, especially early on. You can see we have seven vehicles assigned to this route. Right, remember, we have 25 total at our bus depot. So I think that this is overkill. So we're gonna drop this down to three for now. You could adjust the time of day, having this operate only in the daytime or only in the nighttime if you wanted to save some money or potentially not have the bus operating when it doesn't make sense. Uh, we have it operating 24 seven. I like doing that, I think it's simpler, but it's really your call. And now that we have this line established, I think that we need to make some more. Let's add a route that goes down this couplet right here. And let's kick this off by adding a roundabout here to Garland Street. And I want that here because we're going to send a route up and down this street, and I want the bus to loop at the roundabout. So we'll begin right here with some stops, and every few blocks we will have stops. Now, I could only get away with zooming out as far as I did on this route because I have one ways. If I were looking at a two way or looking at a spot where we have a number of routes coming together, you've got to get close so you don't make mistakes. And one of the things you're seeing is as I come up, I can have two stops side by side 
that would be a way for me to have buses stopping in close proximity, but not necessarily at the exact same stop. So lots of customization here, and you really wanna take some of these things into consideration as you're creating your routes. So once again, we'll just create a new route, selecting our stops, looping here, and you can see that we have that nice loop occurring right here, and then we'll select all of these stops and add them to our route. And one way that you can tell that your route is finished is as you hover over that final stop, it'll say complete route. So we see that, we now know that this is operational. So I wanna add a bus station to our downtown area. Let's contemplate adding it maybe right about here near Beechwood Street. We'll get rid of the street actually and use a bit of eminent domain on some of these homes. This is going to cause me to relocate Florence Street around our new bus facility or even cut it off entirely. That's what we're gonna do. So we'll place that right here. Now, I wanted to place the bus station, not because I think that we have a particular need for it right now, but uh, because I wanna show you what it can do. You can have your bus routes meeting here, beginning or ending here, and you can add extra platforms. So if you wanted to have even more routes here, and you can add taxi stops here as a way to have your taxis and buses meet. So this isn't entirely necessary right now. I think that our city's a little bit too small for it. So we are going to pretend that this land was reserved for this. We'll just turn it off and there will be a upkeep cost to keeping this off. It's not very much, it's 5,600 per month, but reasonably you might wanna keep this facility in this location turned off just for the future, like you're reserving it or planning for it in the future. So we will do that. We could also get rid of this, but uh, for the time being, I'll just leave it like this. There's one more thing that you can do with your buses that I think you should be aware of and that is create inner city routes. So you don't need the bus station for this. You can actually just use a regular bus stop. So we're gonna use one of the stops right here and we'll go into our bus line tool and I'm gonna select this stop and then we're gonna zoom way out and on the edge of your highways, you'll notice these little stops out here. So we'll click on this, a new waypoint to Pomeroy. Then we'll come way over here again, find that stop and we'll complete that route and we'll name this the Nicolay Bay Line. And I'm renaming that because we are able to actually rename our outside connections. And to do that, we just click on one of our outside connections and we will name this Nicolay Bay. So now this is connecting up to Nicolay Bay, which I think is a really fun uh, way to immerse yourself in the surrounding communities. But one thing that you might've noticed about this line, besides the fact that the color is the exact same as the previous line, which will make that green, is that this might not be the ideal way to turn around. And one of the fun things about City Skylines too is if you go into your bus line tool, you can add a waypoint. So we'll do that, we'll continue down this way. And I think that this is a much more logical way of addressing this turnaround. And then rather than making a right here, let's have it stick on this street. This is just much more logical. So this is something that you can do, add those waypoints to make your bus routes make a bit more sense. And then the final thing that you can do with bus routes is add dedicated bus lanes. So this is a really uh, exciting thing to do. Remember though, as you do this, you are preventing other vehicles from accessing this road. So you don't wanna add these all over the place. Now, the one place I really want to start to think about these is this collector couplet that we've placed right here. So I'm gonna come through and I'm using the replace tool with the one way public transport line. And I'm just gonna upgrade a portion of this. So. I'm hovering on this, I'm clicking it, and then I'm gonna slide way down here and we'll add this all the way down here. Now, I can't go all the way to this road, it'll mess it up, but I can end it right here and then add this individually. And then we'll do it to the other side of the road as well. And then the other place I want to do this is the other couplet that we added. And now on these lines where we have red, that will be for buses and taxis only and folks making right-hand turns which is really, really helpful if you want your buses not to conflict with the other traffic in your city. Right now, we are seeing absolutely crazy utilization of our taxi and not so great utilization of our bus. So we're gonna let this go for just a few minutes and focus on our landscaping and detailing. For our detailing today, there are just a couple of things that I wanna focus on, and that's primarily extending our path along the coast and then I wanna add trees in between our couplet. So for our path, we're gonna sever that curve right there and then just go into our continuous tool. All I care about having on is snap to existing geometry because I don't want to have to try to figure out how to, how to connect to this. Mm -hmm. 
And then through the center here, I want to place an apple tree. And the reason I want to go with that is I'm hoping that we see lots of flowers. Now there's something I want to get a little bit better at that I have continually missed, and that is adding trees in between our buildings. They take a long time to grow, so it's best to plant them early. So I think for this, we'll go with some larger trees. Let's go for some oaks and some spruces. That'll give us cover in the summer and the winter. And I'm gonna go with a fairly strong brush size for this so we get some dense coverage, but a small brush size so I can target it to within these areas. So we'll go about 80. And then all of these irregularly shaped blocks, just gonna go over the top once with our oaks and once with our spruces. And I think that that is probably pretty good for our landscaping. And this is something I just wanna start keeping in mind because there's always these awkward gaps in between buildings because of the way the zoning grid works. And if we're gonna have those, we should probably try to fill them in with something. And now I wanna switch gears and focus on our city services for a moment. You see, we've got some homes abandoning it. And if we click on the home, we can actually troubleshoot it. Yeah, high crime, poor education services, and unreliable healthcare coverage. So this all comes down to being far away from our little regional facilities over here that we've been using for our city services. So. For our police station, for instance, we've got six patrol cars patrolling. And if we look at our info views and look at police, we can actually see that the coverage kind of stinks over here. And we've got a total of six police cars and they're covering this entire area. So that's part of our problem. I think for the time being, rather than building another police station, we're gonna try to upgrade this. Adding the upgrade will cost us $18,000. Upkeep is the same and it will double the number of patrol cars that we have. So it's significantly more cost effective than adding another police station. Hopefully that does the trick for us. You gotta remember that the way that police is handled in this game is that the cars will patrol around and they need to be in proximity of some of these crimes. So hopefully this will do the trick for us. I'm gonna get rid of some of these abandoned buildings, see if things spring back to life. And we'll let this go for just one moment. And I see another building abandoned and it's still upset about high crime. So I think we know the solution, even though our coverage should be fine, even though we get a lot of patrol cars, I think it's time for us to invest in our second police station. The other concern that we were seeing over here is the school availability. It's a little ways away. The elementary school is almost full. So we will add one more elementary school and we'll add that quite a ways away. I think we'll add that right about here. And right away, I'm going to add the playground on and we should be good there. The last thing I wanna do from a detailing standpoint is add some districts and then show you why we're gonna add these. So when I add districts, I like to think about the way that things naturally develop because those are likely the bounds of the neighborhood. So we'll go into our district creation tool and this is really a slick tool. You add a node and then you can just slide along here and create a district. Now that we've got our first district here, we're gonna rename this Downtown Tutoria. And let's fill the rest of this area out with districts. And let's say you did something I just did right here. I closed this district off before I wanted to. You can add on to it. I'm gonna add a node right here and just pull this down. And then I can just recreate this district however I want to. And as we were creating our districts, we've unlocked Milestone 7, Busy Town. Let's take a look at this quickly. We get ore mining, gated communities, which is a policy which allows you to basically prevent anyone who doesn't live in the neighborhood from going there. And we've got loan limits. We've also got a ton of expansion permits and development points that we've unlocked, which is excellent. But let's get back to creating our districts. And 
And we've got districts now around most of our zone buildings. And we're doing this not just for the sake of immersion, although I do think it adds a lot. We're also doing it because now that we have these districts, we can click in them, assign specific policies if we wanted, and then learn more about the districts themselves. So for instance, if we wanted to look at Autumn Meadows, we could see that there are 141 households, 268 residents, and the average wealth is comfortable. So we can learn about this neighborhood, which I think is really exceptional. It also can help you figure out where you have the most jobs, for instance, right here as we click in this area, we can see that we've got almost 4,000 residents in downtown and over 600 jobs. So this could be really helpful if you wanna think about redevelopment, where you might wanna target that. You can learn more about these specific areas, the number of households available, a whole variety of information. So I think this is really, really uh, good to do in your communities. And even though this is a tutorial, if you see a neighborhood that you have a name for, please drop it down in the comments and I will rename these based upon your suggestions. So I'll zoom out to here so you can see all the names and let me know the existing name and then the name that you would like to change to. And with that, I think that things are looking really good in our city. It's time to take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour. And before we wrap things up, I just want to see how our transit utilization is looking. 2,012 citizens per month are taking the bus, 621 are taking taxis, and we've got 26 tourists a month, which is impressive considering we don't really have any tourist amenities. So, so I'm very pleased with where we are lining up there. Let's take a look at our traffic flow as well. You can see our flow for the most part is pretty good. Now remember, flow is a measure of congestion. So there are gonna be some places where it's not quite so good. Our main drag, Birch Street, right through our downtown has some congestion, which makes sense. There are a ton of traffic signals through here. Same thing right here. I'm guessing this is because we signalized this. Yeah, you can see that right there as well. The other important measure is volume. This is the number of vehicles attempting to take that route. And you can see our bridges are really our choke points. So in subsequent episodes, we're gonna need to focus on more connectivity. We're doing well inside the city itself, but these couple of bridges, they're taking a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic, and it makes a lot of sense. But with this, I think that this is where we're gonna leave it today. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I wanna thank you for your time today. There's a lot of things you could've been doing and you decided to hang out with me. And I don't take that for granted. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.